Morning everyone. Uh, well, you've already seen one talk on the applications of maths today. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, what mathematics has got to do with that rather gruesome trio of topics there. The thing that maths does is it provides you with a language in order to abstract an idea and explain things which you wouldn't have thought were initially connected. And the one concept which connects those up is the idea of a fractal. Has anyone come across the idea of a fractal before? There's a few hands gone up there. Well, I'll be telling you what a, a, a fractal is. We'll need the idea of a fractal, and we'll also need some basic ideas in probability as well. And you'd have seen that probability also featured a bit in, in Stephen's talk just before. So first of all, a question. How long is the coastline of mainland Britain? There's London, Nottingham's about there, that's about 120 miles. So, any guesses? Take an estimate, yeah. How many? 3,000 miles. Higher or lower? Lower? Higher? Well, 10,000? 20,000? A million? That's the answer. It depends how long your unit of measurement is. The answer is, in fact, anything you like. Well, let's take a look. Let's start to zoom in and see what happens. As we zoom in, we're zooming in on a, a vicinity around uh, Land's End. You'll see that you're starting to see more and more detail. Zoom in a bit more, and again, you're starting to see individual coves in the landscape. And as we zoom in here on Nandigil Bay, there's Land's End just there, you see more and more detail. And eventually, you start to see individual rocks. Each time you magnify, then you reveal more and more detail. So for instance, if your initial um, measuring stick was a mile, you wouldn't be able to get into Nandigil Bay. You wouldn't see it, you wouldn't be able to resolve it. If your measuring stick was a centimetre, then you could go round individual rocks in the bay. If it was smaller than that, you could go round grains of sand. So at each step, the length actually goes up. So what that in illustrates is that the idea of scale is actually rather important. And when it comes to the idea of a fractal, it's very, very important indeed. There's a, an easy mathematical way that you can uh, develop such a thing, like a, a, a mathematical coastline, if you like. And this is illustrated by a thing called the Koch curve. So let's imagine, first of all, we take uh, a straight line. Let's assume it's one meter in length. And we apply uh, an iterative process to it. So what I'm going to do is chop that into three, remove the middle third, and replace it by a triangle. So. The first iteration, it looks like that. It was originally one unit length, and now each of these is a third, and there's four of them. So the length has increased to four thirds. Right, do it again. Each straight line bit, chop out the middle third, and put a triangle in there. So there's the next iteration, uh, and the length has now gone up to 16 ninths. It's got bigger than that length. Right, do it again. Each straight line segment, take out the middle third and replace it with a triangle. And you can see that you're getting something which is getting progressively more crinkly. A bit like the coastline. Well, keep on doing that and eventually you end up with the Koch curve here. This is after effectively an infinite number of iterations. If that length started off being a metre, we've seen that the length of that increases at each step. The length of that Koch curve is in fact greater than the circumference of the Earth in about 60 iterations. So although that distance is still one metre, the length of that curve 
is in fact infinite. You've been able to pack infinity into a finite space. Now what's more, if you were to take a, a microscope and start zooming in on any part of the Koch curve, what would you see? Well, you'd just see more copies of the Koch curve. So let's take a look at that. So we now zoom in on it, and the Koch curve just reveals more and more Koch curves. So the idea of a scale here has kind of broken down. You keep on going, you just see more and more of the same thing. So although the Koch curve is actually quite a complicated object, it's actually very, very simple. Because any part of it contains itself. And that is a fractal. It's something where the scale starts to break down. Fractals occur all the time in nature. Here's a, a picture of uh, a fern which is uh, affected by frost. Um, if we look at a, an individual frond here, then you can see you get like a spike coming off, but that itself produces further fronds. And the fronds have got fronds on top of them. So you keep on making copies of yourself as you go along. There are other examples of, uh, of fractals occurring. Here's, in fact, uh, another picture of um, uh, some mountains in the Himalayas. And we've got, again, a kind of like branching process. So you might think that that was uh, uh, a fern of some sort, but in fact it's not. You've got valleys, they have spurs coming off them, and the spurs have valleys coming off them as well. So again, you're making copies of the original structure that you have there. Here's some more mountain regions. This is in, uh, in northern Libya. And again, you're seeing a similar kind of uh, uh, patination occurring there. And these also occur in you. So here's a picture of uh, the lung network. You can see that you've got branches, and the branches themselves have got branches on them. And if you zoom in on those, then again, you can see that there's this branching structure. So there's this repeated fractal-like cascade of scales. Well, how can we characterize an object? Well, one way of doing it is to ask the question, how many dimensions do you need in order to locate that object? Well, the simplest object you can think of is a dot. And you don't need any dimensions for that. So that dimension is zero. A straight line, you need one dimension in order to describe that. A region of a plane, you need two dimensions for it. What about the Koch curve? Well, in actual fact, you need something in between a straight line and a plane. It's more crinkly than a straight line, but it doesn't fill up all the space of a plane. So it's in between. It's got a fractional dimension. And in fact, the dimension of this object is given by that number there, the natural logarithm of 4 divided by 3, which comes out to be 1.26. It's in the middle between those two values. Yes? It's a technical question, and I'll, I'll come to it at the end, all right? Because I've, I've got a slide prepared for it. OK, so that, that's the idea of a fractal, then. It's something where uh, the idea of a scale size is, is tricky. It's something where you get a cascade of scale sides according to uh, the number of iterations that you take. 